It's no secret that humans are using more energy than ever before, and our current means of producing it just aren't sustainable. Luckily, scientists are looking into alternative forms of energy. One of the most promising of these is something called nuclear fusion. I don't really know what that is, so I came to ask some of the brightest students in the country here at Princeton University. Vamanos. Hi, uh, so what can you tell me about nuclear fusion? Absolutely nothing. All right, excellent. What can you tell me about a plasma? It sounds like plasmid. All right, that's, that's something. So what can you tell me about a plasma? A plasma? Yeah. So can you tell me anything about a plasma? Plasma is like a kind of blood. Okay, so do you know anything at all about plasma? I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. Oh. <laughs> Only that it's the fourth state of matter. <laughs> and apparently it does exist on Earth. Nuclear fusion. Anything? Uh, not enough to comment about it. Really. Okay, cool. That's fine. Thanks a lot. No cool. Have a good day. Well, that wasn't very helpful. Looks like we'll have to do some research of our own to find out what this fusion energy business is all about. So here we are at Princeton's Firestone Library. Let's go check it out. In our exhausted and delirious state, plasma and nuclear fusion finally started to make sense. Here are two hydrogen atoms living as a gas in a container. Each atom contains a nucleus, with a positive charge, and an electron, with a negative charge. So overall, each atom's charge is neutral. The electrons orbit the nuclei. What if a scientist decides to crank up the temperature of the container? As the heat energy increases, the atoms get excited and start to move more quickly, especially the little electrons. But what if the scientist increases the temperature even more? If the inside of the container got to be even hotter than the surface of the sun, the electrons would be moving so energetically that they would actually escape from their nuclei and would be free to move around the container. The process of electrons leaving their nuclei is called ionization. Once the electrons ionize and are no longer bound to their nuclei, the gas transforms into the fourth state of matter, plasma. Unlike a gas, plasma contains charged particles. The negatively charged electrons and positively charged nuclei are now just floating around and are no longer linked to one another. If the scientist wants to create a nuclear fusion reaction, she's going to have to somehow smash these two freed nuclei together. Right now, though, the nuclei are kept apart. Why? Because 1. The particles are not packed densely enough. And 2. Because of the Coulomb force. Coulomb force is the force of repulsion between two particles of the same charge. Because the two nuclei both have a positive charge, it's easy for the Coulomb force to keep them separated. First, the scientist must increase the number of particles, making the container more crowded. We can simulate this by cramming our two nuclei into a smaller volume. Now that there aren't so many places to go, the nuclei have a much harder time avoiding each other, especially since they're zipping around the container so fast. And now, to overcome the Coulomb force, the scientist then has to raise the temperature even higher almost 10 times hotter than the core of the sun. The particles are now so close to one another and moving so fast that they can finally almost touch. When they get near enough, yet another force kicks in, aptly named the strong nuclear force. This force attracts the two nuclei together and is incredibly strong, but only kicks in when they're extremely close. Nuclear fusion is what happens when the scientist successfully smashes these nuclei together. Where are we? I just had the craziest dream. 
Hi, my name's Arturo. Welcome to the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab. What is that? Oh, this is a machine that creates plasma. Let me show you guys how it works. Here at the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab, we saw some of what we dreamed about in real life. This plasma, or ionized gas, has some pretty cool properties. For example, because the negative electrons and the positive nuclei are no longer bound together, plasma can be affected by magnetism. As you see, we can control where the plasma moves by moving this magnet around. Magnets are actually what we use to confine the plasma in a fusion reactor, not traffic cones. We encounter plasma all the time here on Earth, in fluorescent lights, televisions, and lightning. But nuclear fusion might be its most important use, not to mention the coolest. Nuclear fusion is the same kind of energy that powers the sun, and it's incredibly efficient. In fact, just one kilogram of fuel could produce enough energy for almost 700 Americans for an entire year. It's very fulfilling to be in, um, in a job where our, you know, our, our ultimate purpose is to try to save the world. I mean, we, we know that, that at the rate that we're going right now, it's completely unsustainable. And we need to find ways to be able to, you know, to, to get to the next level. And we feel that with fusion, we can do this. Um, so it's really, it's really great to be working towards this goal. Thanks for watching!